Hello! My name is Ram and welcome to another video of Matuklasan. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to perform t-test dependent or paired sample t-test using Microsoft Excel. The t-test dependent or sometimes called paired sample t-test is an inferential statistical test that determines whether there is a statistically significant difference between the means of two related groups. Now, let's say I was able to invent a food additive that could increase the height of any adult in just three months. To test the effectiveness of this food additive using t-test dependent, I need to select at least 10 volunteers. So, I, let's say I have 10 volunteers for this experiment and I need to get their mean height. So what I will do is let them take the food additive and these same respondents will be tested after three months. So I will check again their mean height. Now by comparing their mean before and after taking the food additive, I'll be able to use the t-test dependent to test the significant difference between the means of this height. And if ever there is an increase in the mean after taking the additive for 3 months and this difference is significant, then my food additive invention is effective. Before performing the t-test dependent, you need to make sure that the samples are randomly selected. Second, the sample data are dependent. And when the sample sizes are less than 30, the populations must be approximately normally distributed. Let's perform the t-test dependent in Microsoft Excel using this example. A researcher is planning to compare the mean scores of the students in math to see whether there is an improvement before and after a particular intervention. To prove that this intervention program is effective, I'm going to give my students a pre-test. So let's say this first column are the scores of my students in the pre-test. And after giving the pretest, I'm going to perform or execute the intervention program. And let's say after five weeks, I will give them another math test with the same type of exam. And this will be the post test. And let's say this column are the scores of the students in this post test. Now, always remember that the respondents on these two tests are just the same. That is why it's called t-test dependent because the tests are given repeatedly on the same set of respondents. To start the analysis, go to data ribbon. Select this data analysis function. If you don't have this function, make sure to check my video about its installation tutorial. Now, select the t-test paired to sample for means. Select OK and input each variable range. So in the first one, we have the pretest, including the label for the column. And on the second one, I'm going to select the post test. Okay, so after selecting it, we have the hypothesized mean difference of zero. We just put zero here because we are assuming uh, that the difference in the mean is not different uh, as stated in our null hypothesis. So the labels are included, so I'm going to select this and our alpha level will be 0.05 or for our level of significance. Now, let me select the output range on this same sheet. So, selecting this, I need to select a range of cells. Then pressing OK will give us this summary table. Looking at this summary table, we can see that the post-test has a higher mean, which is 65.22. So we can say that the scores of the students increase after the intervention program. But is this significant? To answer this question, let us look at our uh, test value, which is negative 5.70. 
So in this um, example, I'm going to use the two-tailed type of test because I'm not really sure if the scores will increase or decrease after the post-test. So let's say we have a two-tailed test here. So by comparing the test value here and the critical value on the two-tailed test, which is this one, we can see here that we have 1.98. But since our test value is negative, I'm going to use the negative value for this one, which is negative 1.98. Now, comparing the two values, negative 1.98 is the line that separates the critical and non-critical region here. And since negative 5.70 is on the left side of the, of the critical value, then it's on the critical region. And for this, we need to reject the null hypothesis. By using the p-value method, I can use this 0, 0.00 here because this is the p-value for our two-tailed test. If you're using the one-tailed test, you can select this one. But either way, you can, we can see here that 0, 0.00 is less than the level of significance, which is 0, 0.05. So the decision now is to reject the null hypothesis. So we got the same results for the critical and p-value method. So we really need to reject the null hypothesis. For reporting the output of the dependent t-test, you can prepare a table containing the sample size, mean, standard deviation, test value, critical value, and the p-value, and the type of test. So you can see here that um, I got these two means in our summary table in Microsoft Excel. So to get the standard deviation, all you need to do is to get the square root of the variance here. So the square root of 190.57 is just 13.8 and the square root of 210.25 is 14.5. Now, um, I place the test value negative 5.7 here and the type of test which is two-tailed so our critical values are positive and negative 1.98 and the p-value is here. From this table we can see that the results from the pre-test and post-test scores before and after the, inter the intervention program shows an increase of scores because from the average of 61.58 in the pre-test, we got an average of 65.22 in the post-test. And this difference between these two means is significant because the p-value is less than 0 0.05. In other words, the intervention program resulted in an improvement in the test scores of students in math. And that's all for this video. If you want more video discussion about hypothesis testing and how to perform them in Microsoft Excel, please check my playlists in the description down below. Thank you for listening and see you in the next video.